For the first time in decades, our people will have a real chance of bringing about real change. This is a chance that we cannot afford to let slip. This year, for the first time in a quarter of a century, the people of Burma will have a chance to choose their leaders. The general election set for November 8th could be a pivotal moment in Burma's long struggle for democracy. A struggle for which thousands have lost their lives and millions more their freedom, as Burma's military elite enforced a decades-long political silence over the country and used poverty and fear to crush dissent while maintaining power and privilege in the hands of a few. In 2011, that all began to change. Burma's military leaders ushered in a sudden shift to semi-civilian government, ending five decades of military rule. Democracy activists inside Burma and overseas swelled with optimism as former General Dane Sain's administration curbed the worst of the junta's rights violations. They freed hundreds of political prisoners in the process, including Aung San Suu Kyi. Now campaigning is underway for an election that's swiftly approaching. Burma's Nobel laureate Aung San Suu Kyi is leading the National League for Democracy down the home stretch. They are the main opposition to the party founded by the former junta, Dane Sain's Union Solidarity and Development Party. From the outside, a vote for change might seem like a simple choice for Burma at the ballot boxes. But Burmese politics is a complex puzzle. Burma's constitution states that 25% of seats across both houses of parliament are unelected. The seats are reserved for army-appointed members. The constitution also keeps the military independent of government oversight and allows it to pick the ministers of defence, home affairs and border affairs. To change the constitution, a 75% parliamentary yes vote is required. When a motion to change it went to Parliament this year, the army members wielded their effective veto and blocked reform, including an attempt to strike out a constitutional clause that blocks those with foreign family members from the presidency, a clause certain to deny Suu Kyi, whose late husband was British and whose children hold UK passports. <laughs> On the streets of Rangoon and Mandalay, this election is all about the NLD and the USDP. But it's a different story in Burma's ethnic states, home to 35% of the country's population and one third of parliamentary seats. In Shan, Mon and Arakan states in particular, ethnic parties hold strong majorities and will be a force to be reckoned with when the mainstream parties potentially look to broker deals to form a government post-election. This election falls at a delicate time for the long, tense and sometimes violent relationship between Burma's ethnic groups and the Burmese-dominated government. By the day of polling, Thane Sain's administration will have spent two years in peace talks with Burma's powerful ethnic armies. The president has pushed hard for a ceasefire to be signed before election day. But analysts believe that many more years of negotiations will be required before peace can be achieved. Buddhist monks in Burma aren't allowed to vote, but that won't stop the senior monkhood 
from exerting their huge influence when it comes to this election. No group is more influential than Mandalay Buddhist Nationalists, the Association for the Protection of Race and Religion. The Mahabharata, as it is known, has brought anti-Muslim sentiment firmly into Burma's mainstream politics. Religious tension is so widespread that even the National League for Democracy has reportedly failed to include a single candidate from Burma's Muslim minority. And Burma's election commission has disqualified scores of Muslim politicians from running in the election, including at least 19 from Burma's Rohingya minority, up to one million of whom will be unable to vote on citizenship grounds. That's despite Rohingya being registered to cast ballots in the last general election. The Rohingya live in apartheid-like conditions in Burma's western Arakan state, with over 100,000 confined to squalid displacement camps. The group's plight and the government's unwillingness to help them has cast a dark shadow over Burma's reform process. And their disenfranchisement, alongside other Muslims, will lead to many to balk at the suggestion that the election will be anything close to free and fair. On the 8th of November, voters will approach the ballot box, each with different dreams and aspirations swimming through their minds. But all will have one thing in common. In Burma, every life has been touched indelibly by the vicious excesses of past military regimes. And this election could prove to be the first step towards national reconciliation.